RNG, also known as random number generator, is something that all gamers have been affected by. Yes, including you and I. You might not know what RNG means, but to keep it simple, RNG is the randomness that happens in every game. When you open a chest, you can get a gold scar and a chug jug, or you can also get a gray pistol and a couple of bandages. So what dictates that? RNG, my friends. Think of RNG as a dice that Fortnite rolls, and the result is what you're left with. Yes, my question is, are you feeling lucky? Are you? RNG doesn't just affect some things, my friends. It affects everything, from what loot you end up getting to where the zone pulls you in every game. You might get extremely good RNG and have a super easy victory royale. Maybe that's happened for you. I love those days. Or you might get extremely bad RNG and just have no chance. It's like nothing's going right. So I'm not here today to debate whether or not RNG is annoying. Clearly, it is annoying. <laughs> okay, that, that, was, that was an easy debate. I, I just won that one. I'm just here to tell you that despite whatever RNG you can get, there are multiple ways that you can get around it. What's going on, guys? This is your guy. That's right. This is your friend, the one and only, your boy Keith Allen. Hey, I want you to connect with me right now on my Instagram when you get a chance because I'm your number one fan. And the sky is not the limit. You could do farther, greater things if you put your mind to it and if you never give up and keep trying. I want to inspire you to be not only the best in this game, but to be the best in life. So keep going, my friends. Keep going. So today, got some good news. We're going to be talking about how to defeat RNG. So if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, I recommend that you check out InstaPro, where we have live 24-7 coaching, which is crazy, from some of the best players in the game. Head on over right now to ProGuys.com. Trust me, you won't regret it. With that said, let's get into the good stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first up is learning your drop spot. Now, this isn't something new. Pro players have been doing this since the dark ages, but when someone asks me on my Insta, hey Keith Allen, so how do I not die off spawn more? And the question that I often ask them immediately is, do you have a set drop spot? And they usually say no way, way too often. So guys, this, this is step number one in defeating RNG. If this was a school lesson, this would be like fourth grade. And if you're in fourth grade and you're watching this, hey, I have much respect for you guys, okay? I remember fractions. I used to hate fractions. Matter of fact, fractions still give me nightmares to this day. So if you're, you're learning that and you're doing that, I got much respect for you guys. Anyways, the twist is, my friends, is that we're going to be studying our drop spots with a very clear intent in mind. If we're going to be tackling RNG, the first thing that we're going to need is good loot. Because without good loot, you're basically a fish out of water. How are you going to out RNG someone who has a blue pump and 200 HP? The answer is, you're not. So instead of complaining about dying off spawn to a lucky guy who gets the shotgun as their first floor loot, let's just develop better early game loot paths. Do you agree? So what I mean by early game loot paths is quite literally the first few floor loot and chests you pick up. These few items is what you're going to be using to kill your opponent who contested your drop spot. Now, if the spot that you land within your drop spot has only two floor loots and one chest spawn within its general vicinity, then what are the odds that you're going to be getting a stacked loadout? Very low. And now you're relying on RNG, extremely good RNG in fact, to give you a loadout that will reliably kill your opponents that are most likely looking to kill you as soon as humanly possible. Instead, try to look for a place within your drop spot that offers you both good positioning and a high density of loot. You want as many floor spawns, chests, and even vending machines that you can get in a very short period of time, right? If your building has a lot of loot, but it's just super spread out, how useful is that going to be for you? Especially considering that you're often going to have to fight before acquiring all of that in the first place. Instead, look for a smaller building or an area that has a much higher density of loot, meaning you're going to have the same loot in a less amount of time and be ready for battle. For example, Frosty Flights is just somewhere that I would absolutely want to land because, you know, there's just a great high density of loot right off the rip. And also, look out for that pesky pusher. But if you do this, you, you're going to almost always have better loot than your opponent. And boom, a huge percent of RNG has now just been eliminated. So in this case that we're talking about, like say that you land at the door on the right hand side of the main building and there are three chests right to your right side if you walk in along with about a dozen floor loot to boot. You're almost going to always have a shield and a high rate of fire gun, think like TAC SMG, silence SMG, shotgun, or even at a minimum an AR. Something at minimum to give you a chance in an early game fight or usually a super overpowered advantage against any opponent who definitely won't be able to loot as much as you did in the same amount of time. So think smarter and allow your high IQ to pay the dividends. Once you've made your way out of spawn, it's time to talk about your materials. Super important as we all know. 
People, for some reason, it's kind of weird. They just don't like to farm. I just don't get it, guys. Who doesn't like to play Farming Simulator for five minutes? <laughs> That's my favorite, said nobody. Are you kidding me? Even though you might rather be out taking fights over farming, farming those extra few mats is going to actually facilitate you in your next fight. All right, so check this out. This is a really good example. Say that you start off with 100 builds, right? You get into a fight and you use 50 of them since your opponent is a true creative cranker. No problem, you think. All right, not a big deal. You have 50 left to work with. But out of nowhere, your favorite thing happens. The third party comes swooping in. Oh no, wow, what am I gonna do now? Now you're forced to burn the rest of your builds to get yourself into a safe spot. Well, you might be safe now, but you're in such a bad position with nothing left, you might as well be dead. So now you need to rotate to the next zone. Someone's still on your tail? Well, now you have no mass to combat that. Other players' RNG into crossing paths with you is just not in your control, but mining more materials to prepare for it definitely was in your control. Okay, I get it. Farming, it ain't fun. All right, who loves to farm? I get it. But the reality of the situation is you never know when you're gonna have to burn mats. So getting lazy with your farming might just be the difference between you getting away with your life or you getting sent back to your favorite place, the lobby. Now, RNG goes past just looting materials. Sure, they are important, but we need to look past that and just talk about the deeper concepts that the pros have already mastered. So putting yourself in a disadvantageous position can allow RNG to exploit you more. So let's just talk about picking your battles. So let me break it down. It's not that picking bad battles is RNG in itself. In fact, RNG has nothing to do with your own decision making at all. Things that are out of your control is considered RNG and nothing else. But if we're gonna master RNG in the first place, we need to learn how to control what we can control. All right, so let me give you a prime example of what battle you should not pick. Okay, you just got into the safe zone, but barely, someone is boxed up on a hill, still edge zone. You decide to fight him thinking he's a bot. Sound like you? Well, we need to make sure that you do not do that at all. And not only that, but you should also know why you shouldn't pick this fight in the future. You see, fighting this made up opponent was a decision that you decided to make. No RNG involved. Where the RNG does come in, or should I say the implied RNG, is when you decide to take the fight. Your opponent might have gotten great looting RNG and may even be more kitted than you. You fight them, right? And you could be on the chopping block. If you do kill them, what if you took the fight too long and zone RNG wasn't in your favor? Well, what do you do then? You see, people like to complain about RNG, but they could have put themselves in better positions nine times out of 10 that wouldn't have made that RNG your reason for being eliminated. So picking your battles, my friends, is a key element of situational awareness that's gonna help you overcome and master RNG. Uh, while we're on the topic of decisions, let's focus on positioning. Deciding on where you want to land after launch padding into late zone and a stacked end game, my goodness, super important. So when you are in a turtle and for some reason, the entire lobby feels just like the need to just spam you with bullets and explosives, you might feel like, wow, that was just extremely random and unfortunate. Well, you are sorta of right. The mob mentality of targeting random players sucks and it's really always unpredictable. But finding better positioning, guys, is just one thing that you can do to reduce the risk of getting targeted by the entire lobby. Lucky Dallin, how do I know what good positioning is? Good question, son. Let's dive into it. That was me, by the way. Actually, that sounded more like somebody's grandma, but I tried. So, first things first, you never want to be super low against the ground. Think about it. If someone shoots a grenade your way, if you're one by one against the ground, it's surely going to get exploded and you're going down with it. Also, logically, the lower you are, the more people you have to have an angle at you. More people you have that has an angle on you means that the mob mentality can fester much quicker. One person targeting you means that the entire lobby can now target you with relative ease. Bad positioning, my friends, goes from annoying to just lethal in moments. Instead, you need to find higher positioning. Get against a hill, land on someone else's build, and just build on top of them. Even if there's nobody around you, for heaven's sake, just build your one by one up a few levels. Anything to just get you off the low ground is crucial to just lower the RNG associated with mob mentality. It's just really not too difficult, but the devil is in the details for this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go over a quick recap of what we just learned. Number one, pick a drop area that has a healthy density of loot. So if someone pushes you early, you have a much better chance of looting them. Number two, spend an extra minute or two to top up on your mats, guys, because you're never gonna know when it's gonna be crucial for your survival. All right, number three, pick fights that cannot be affected by RNG. Edge zone engagements or fights that have a high probability of third partying are mainly what I'm talking about here. 
And finally, number four, find elevation in your turtles. Use natural heights such as a mountain or house to get off the ground. If you can't do that, then use an extra 100 mats to go up a few layers. You know, pros will use these strategies all the time, but make it look so easy. They don't even have to mention what they're doing, and they're doing it because it's just second nature to them. You look at your favorite pros and you ask yourself, why are they just luckier than me? Well, they actually don't have better luck than you, no. Epic Games does not rig their chest nor give them the next zones. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I know. But on a serious note, what I do know is that the pros minimize their exposure to RNG by using the concepts that I listed in this video. Yes, they get the same loot as you, and it isn't always pretty. Yes, they get terrible zone RNG sometimes. They just deal with it better than you do. Hopefully, not after this video, though. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is your guide. That's right, your friend, Keith Allen. Hey, I want you to connect with me right now on my Instagram. I believe in you. Like I said earlier, the sky is the limit. So connect with me when you get an opportunity. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, I got one more favor to ask of you, all right? Make sure that you leave a like and leave a comment letting us know what your favorite part was of this video. We do a lot of work to put these educational videos together. So please let us know that you're digging into this and what direction you're going into. Hey, that's going to be all for this video. We're going to see you on the next one.